Okay, so today we, we talked a little bit about um, populations and some of the distributions that, that we've seen. And this is not September, no matter how much I keep insisting that it is. It's 10, 15, 15. And we're going to talk about an animal that I just love. An animal that I, whoops, wrong, wrong tool. An animal that I just love. Uh, not a squirrel. A rat. Is that a hamster? It's a little rat. No. Mm. It's a bunny. Oh. It's a beaver. beaver. Castor canandensis, our friend the beaver. So, beavers are a North, they're North American wildlife. Endemic in Ohio, pretty common around here. Tell me everything you know about beavers. They got big tails. They have big tails. Tell me something else. They make dens. They build lodges and live in them as families. Tell me something else. Build dams. Well, anything's mean if you threaten it. They build dams. They dam up creeks and rivers and ditches and drainage passages. Yeah. They eat the inner bark of wood. Okay, what else do you know about them? Well, you know what? They may not find you to be the picture of beauty either because you've got those short little teeth. Look at you. You have no tail. So, you know, what's beautiful to a beaver is beautiful to a beaver. What's beautiful to a human is beautiful to a human. I don't think you can judge them by your standards. Humph. Okay. I don't okay. a big, long, fat, black thing. They're not always. You're not a beaver. <laughs> if you were a beaver, you might think that they were just the most beautiful thing ever. It might be love at first tail I slap. I think a bird or something else. Well, you know, yeah, you would have limited reproductive success is what I'm going to say. Okay, so tell me everything else you know about beavers. Make their dens they swim. Them. That's a good one. What else do you know about beavers? They have eyes. Are those whiskers? Wow. Those are whiskers. They have whiskers? They have whiskers. They have yeah. whiskers. They have ears. They have whiskers. They have ears. What else do you know about beavers? So somebody mentioned that they swim. They spend a lot of time in the water, huh? They have a creek named after them. Okay, we've got a creek named after them. We've got a city and a county over if you cross over into PA. There's western beaver, south beaver, north beaver, big beaver, western beaver. I said that already. Um, over here we got Beaver Creek and Beaver Township, and we got the Beaver River right down there. We got all kinds of, yeah, they're pretty important locally. We have Beaver Local, we have, yeah, okay. So, you know, clearly fairly important around here. Okay. They spend a lot of time in the water. But they don't have gills. They do not. They're mammals. Right. Which means they have fur and they nurse their young. That means they have nipples. That means they have nipples, yes. Are they cold-blooded? They're mammals, which means they're warm-blooded. They can control their own body temperature. This is good. So, have you guys ever been wet on a fall day? You ever been out in the rain? 40-degree rainy day outside. It's lucky that we have such a tropical climate, huh? So you don't get chilled. We're not very tropical. So beavers, I mean, they spend all that time in the water. It's a good thing that it's so warm and sunny here all year long and it never gets cold or they'd get really cold, right? No, it's no. July. We always get, like, Wait, what? Ice. It's, like, cold, like, six days out of the week, every week. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So then how do beavers survive if it's cold and they're in the water all the they time? Because they have a blanket. They have fur. They have a lot of stores of fat. They do store a lot of fat. Yeah, they're they're rather fatty creatures. They're but there's there's another trick here. Anybody ever get wet, cold feet on a winter day? Yeah, Ugh. That sucks. it's awful. It's what can you do to your shoes or boots to keep them from letting water put in? Put them on the heater. Oh, put a bag over them. Okay, put a bag over them. That's one way. Them. What else? Like Maybe you got good boots that they take good care of. These ones. Do you take good care of your boots? I do. I plan to wash them when I go home today. So. What can you do to waterproof a pair of boots other than plastic bags? They have spray. They have the the the, the most old fashioned part of it is greasing your boots. Greasing your boots. Well, you know how beavers stay relatively waterproof? They grease. Butt grease. What? I love my job. Butt grease. <laughs> Beaver butt grease. They have butt grease. They have butt grease. Can you buy that in stores? Or? You can actually buy mink butt grease. You can't really buy beaver butt grease. Um, no, one time you could have. So, 
Beavers have something called an anal gland. Your dog has this too. If you've ever seen the dog do the butt scoot boogie on the carpet, they're trying to clear out their anal glands. Okay. I'm sorry, does not everybody call it that? We don't have an anal gland. <laughs> so we call it at our house. No. What happens if like, they don't clear it out? Dogs, it can get impacted and it can get, it can get infected. Nothing good. You want to get it cleaned so out. So, okay, beavers have butt grease. Beaver butt grease. Now, they have little sacs near their anus. They are called anal glands, just like your dog's anal glands. And those anal glands secrete a greasy, oily substance. Okay? Well, grease is a good waterproofer. If you oil your boots, they keep the water out. So what beavers do... Tell me about beaver feet. What do you know? They're webbed. They're big and they're webbed. So everybody get big webbed feet out. Beavers take those big webbed feet and they grab the butt grease, the secretions from their anal gland, if we're being scientific, and they comb it through their hair. Nice. She's like, oh. Calm down. <laughs> Until they are very, very waterproof. That's disgusting. Do they stink? That's why they're always. Well, they smell like beaver butt grease, which I'm sure other beavers find attractive. Doesn't pugs do that? Like they let off like a. Don't what? Dogs? Pugs, yeah. All dogs. All dogs, yeah. Dogs mark their territory. So when a dog defecates, when a dog poops, as the poop comes out, it puts pressure on the anal glands, and they secrete butt grease with the poop. And so their poops mark their territory because other dogs will smell that. Oh, this is somebody else's turf. So beavers also do some turf marking with their butt grease, but mostly they use it to stay really waterproof. So this gets us back to our little distribution up here. Oh, no. This gets us back to our little distribution up here. So if you were to go out... If you wanted to be a biologist who did these sorts of things, and somebody does, somebody everywhere, and you were going to go out and capture beavers and measure the amount of anal gland secretions that they produce, what we'll call beaver butt grease, you could measure the amount of beaver butt grease that is produced by beavers. And maybe some beavers produce you know, a tenth of a gram of butt grease per day. So we'll, we'll say that this is... No, we'll just call it what it is. We'll call it butt grease. Pick up recording. So grease produced per day. So maybe there are some beavers that produce an entire five grams of grease per day. If we were to go out and capture a thousand beavers over the course of a few months and we sedate them, so we give them a little sedative dart, we put them to sleep, we pick them up, we empty their anal sacs to measure how much butt grease is in there at any given time, and we were to put this on a distribution, what do you think it would look like? Well, there are probably some that don't produce much. And there are probably some that produce a little bit more. And there are probably some that produce a little bit more, a little bit more. And what would we probably have? A normal distribution. For most characteristics, for anything that we care to measure, whether it is skin tone, fur color, amount of butt grease produced per day, height, speed, um, some chemical, some other chemical that your body can produce, serotonin in your brain, for any characteristic, the most common distribution is something like that. Now, we know why beavers produce butt grease. What does producing beaver butt grease allow them to do? Stay waterproof. Stay waterproof. And if you're spending your life in the water, being waterproof means being warmer. So they actually, I mean, it's, it's like having a nice thick coat of some waterproofing agent on them, and fur, water doesn't even get down to their skin. So the water kind of rolls right off them. It just beads off them like rain on a windshield that's been treated with Rain-X. 
Heck, for all we know, Rain-X could be made of beaver, beaver butt grease. I've never read the ingredients. That's a joke. It's not made of beaver butt grease, I promise you. Um, for any characteristic, we have this kind of distribution. So, would there be any problem with not producing very much butt grease if you're a beaver? Would there be a problem if you're down in this part of the range? What problems could you anticipate if you were down here? <coughs> yeah, you might not produce enough to keep your fur waterproof. If your fur is not waterproof and you're a beaver, um, you could get hypothermia. Being wet and cold, as a I have a friend of mine who is constantly saying to her kids about lots of things, that's a good way to die! Being wet and cold is a great way to die. Hypothermia is a very real threat. On a four, you can die on a 40 degree day from hypothermia, 45 degree day. If you get wet, you start to lose heat faster than your body can replenish it. You have to maintain what? You have to keep stable conditions. What do we call that? Stable internal conditions for living things. Oh. Homeostasis. Homeostasis, yeah. Yeah, steady state. Well, if you're a beaver who doesn't produce enough butt grease and you get wet, your body temperature drops on that chilly fall day. And if your body temp, I mean, for you, it's, I think, 86 is the threshold. So normal body temp's about 98, 99. Um, if your core temp drops below about 86, you are at risk of death. Um, you know, there's a temperature threshold for beavers, too. If their temperature drops below a certain point, they have a very serious risk of death. So if you're not producing enough grease, then you might not be able to keep yourself dry and you might not be able to keep yourself warm and if you can't do that you might be a dead beaver. Now what about producing a whole ton of butt grease? Can you imagine any problems with that? Overheating. Overheating? What do you mean? Like your body's working so hard to make all that butt grease you get or you're so waterproof that you overheat? Yeah. Okay, like putting on a raincoat. Put too much butt grease on you and you're overheat. Maybe. That's a possibility. There's a, there's, a, there's a bigger risk, though, and, and it has to do with your dog and the butt scoot boogie. Suffocation. No. Do they have pores, beavers? Of course. Yeah, they have pores. But well, they would suffocate them, right? Yeah, they wouldn't suffocate. Um, if you are a beaver who is producing so much butt grease that you can't get all of it out, I mean, there are only so many hours in the day, and beavers, frankly, spend a lot of their day doing that. They spend a lot of their day smearing butt grease on them. That's their primary activity most days. <sighs> Woke up. I got a to-do list here. Hmm, let's see. Choose some wood, smear butt grease, move some logs, smear butt grease, um, patch that hole in the dam, smear some butt grease. If they're not busy chewing on wood, they're smearing butt grease on their hair. That's what they do. They got to stay waterproof. So, it, but if you're a beaver who's producing so much oil, so much anal grease, that you can't get it all out, what did we say can happen to your dog if they don't get it all out? They can get an infection. So what happens if your dog gets an infection? Well, maybe. Take them to the vet. They get an antibiotic. They get better, right? Somebody goes in there and cleans out their anal glands. You know, God bless the vet tech who does that for lots of dogs. It's horrible. It's a horrible, horrible thing to have to do. I've, had, I've done it. But I had, I had a dog who had chronic issues, and the vet finally said, look, I'm charging you 10 bucks every time you come in. Why don't I just teach you how to do it? Okay. It might be worth 10 bucks. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Awful. Yeah, like I said, God bless the vet tech who does that stuff, because... After that dog died, I would never do it again. But anyway, if you have a dog with an infected anal gland, they go to the vet. It gets cleaned out. They get an antibiotic. What happens to a wild animal that gets an infection? They just die. They crawl into a hole and they die. 
In the wild, no vet tech goes out to the beaver lodge and says, okay, come here, lift your tail. Squeeze. It doesn't happen that way. They just die. So there are some definite problems to producing too much or too little. So you know what's a great thing if you're a beaver? Water. Producing just the right amount of butt grease. So guess what most beavers produce? Just the right amount of butt grease. Where's the mode on this distribution? In the middle. In the middle. Not too much, not too little. Somewhere in the middle is usually pretty good. This is like the, the, the Goldilocks syndrome. Just right. That's what you want. Everything to be just right. So there is a pressure for beavers to produce the right amount of anal gland secretions. A lot of beavers that produce too much probably died. A lot of beavers that didn't produce enough probably died. Baby beavers produce? Pardon? Did baby beavers produce? Baby beavers are born with anal glands. Yep, they start producing oil very early. Um, there are a lot of animals that have anal glands, gland secretions. You know one of them very well. Um, you, you can smell them when they get hit on the road from a long ways away. Skunk. Skunks. Skunks. The skunk smell, that's just anal, anal gland secretions. If you ever get skunked or have a dog that gets skunked, it's greasy. It's oily. That's what it is. It's butt grease. It's just really, really pungent. So, yeah. There's an advantage to producing just the right amount. So for skunks, you want to produce enough that you can defend yourself, not so much that you can't get it all out if you need to, that you get clogged up anal glands and get an infection and die, a little dead skunk with an infected anal gland, and not so little that you can't defend yourself. So again, just right. You want it to be just right. Okay, on Monday, we're going to do a couple things. If you have not already shared a document with me with your name and the name of your creature on it, you need to do that. I want, I'll, I'll walk through that with you. I want to be able to comment. I do not want to be able to edit. So I will go through and check off who's got them, and you can change my collaboration ability if you want to or if you need to. Um, also on Monday, we're going to start to talk a little bit about mutants. Mutants. You're all a bunch of mutants. So am I. Oh, you're thinking of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. No, this is a different kind of thing altogether. So we're going to start to talk about that. You will have a quick recall quiz on Monday. We'll talk a little bit about advantages and disadvantages of doing too much or too little of something, such as producing butt grease if you're a beaver. Um, and that's where we'll stop it today.